have two peer support workers here from Mind and Body Consultants. Uh, in the studio, uh, Ivan Karshishi, I hope I've pronounced that correctly, and uh, Sasha Sher. So welcome to Take It From Us. Uh, let's uh, ask Ivan first. Now, this is a bit uh, ironic, really. We've got a, a man who has a Polish surname who has uh, was born in France, and he has bought a karakia along with him. So, Ivan, here we go. Kia ora, te marino. May peace be widespread. Kia whakapapa, ponamu te moana. May the sea be like green stone. Hei huari, mā tāto i te rangi nei. A pathway for us all this day. Aura, ta- atau, aroa mai. Give love, receive love. Tato i tato katoa. Let us show respect for each other. Well, it's got some very lovely uh, messages in it. Right at the end there, let us show respect for each other. And our theme music is called uh, Respect Yourself. Uh, And not only, I think, it suggests respecting ourselves, but respecting others as well. And the other wonderful word that I've, uh, I've, I've... really come to think about since being in, in hospital is that lovely word peace and I guess it's one of my goals uh, after being uh, in hospital for four weeks uh, some weeks ago now is to try and live a much more peaceful peaceful life and I think uh, Sasha you were, you were reading the um, translation of that karakia is peace important to you? Oh completely I think if you can live your life with peace and in peace, you can go very far. Right. And uh, I guess that peace has been challenged a bit for you recently because you had a very serious accident <laughs> which uh, took you out. Uh, you tried to take on the pavement and the pavement won. Ah, oh, yeah, it was a good lesson. Right. Yeah, you need to slow down. It was it's something that's taught me quite a lot in the last seven weeks is that, you know, take take a little bit of time out doesn't always save you time to try and rush. Right. Yeah. Well, sometimes time out can be sort of forced on us, can't, can't it, when, if we overdo it? And that's that's what I uh, recognised that I did, and the result was uh, four weeks in, in uh, Fraser McDonald. Yeah, it's no use burning the candle at both ends. You can't give if your cup's not full. Well, that, that's wonderful, because uh, I... I was talking um, about the tank being absolutely empty and, Mm. uh, you know, I don't know whether, Ivan, have you had that sort of experience or, Sasha, where the tank is empty? Oh, yeah. Lots of times. Have you? Yeah. So you mean that you've you've got out of balance and you've overdone it? Yeah, I've gone out of balance um, at some stage in my life and many times and... um, just took me a long time to find some tools to uh, try to stay well right. and um, to keep trying to be healthy. Yeah. So um, we'll we'll ask both Ivan and uh, Sasha to introduce themselves. Uh, and I've already given a bit of a clue with Ivan in that uh, he has uh, this Polish uh, surname, Kaszyski, uh, and yet he grew up, I believe, in Burgundy in France. That's right, yeah, in a small city. Right. In Burgundy. And we, I used to go with my granddad watching the rugby when at the time was uh, fully amateur rugby. And they used to be the best team in France. Right. <laughs> so I've got very good, fond memories of that. Right. Yeah. Did you call it fully macho? Well, no. The, the, I mean, there was like, lots of guys, but also everyone was welcome, uh, women yeah. included. Right. Yeah. Not not playing the game though, watching. Yeah, just watching. I play. I played rugby too, but um, right at uh, my yeah. level in France. In France, yes. Right. Yeah. Not so much in uh, New Zealand. It's a bit small for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's always the opportunity of being a halfback. Yeah, I, I only played in the scrum actually. Oh, did you? Right. Yeah. All the numbers. Yeah. So, what brought you to New Zealand, Ivan? Well, I. Um, I was deeply in love with the music, 
the flying nun music, like bands like the Clean, the Toldos, Chris Knox, uh, the Bats, all the flying nun bands right. uh, emerging from Dunedin. Emerging from Dunedin. Yeah, I think like the 80s, uh, the, all the flying nun bands, they kind of had the strong scene in Dunedin. So, sorry, is, fl- is Flying Nun a type of music or is it a band? Flying Nun is a label. It's oh. a New Zealand label. Okay. Mm. It still exists, actually. So, so that music attracted you to what? To go and live in Dunedin? Well, I, didn't, I never lived in Dunedin, but I, I used to buy the vinyls, the records, the old-style records. But Sasha, she wouldn't know too <laughs> much because she's a bit younger <laughs> than us. But the vinyl that we used to, to buy, I ordered them directly from um, Flying Nun New Zealand. And wow. I always loved the All Blacks, obviously, because in France, the All Blacks um, are highly considered. Right. And whenever you watch a game in France, when the All Blacks do the haka, you never hear people um, whistling over the haka. And uh, they always respect it. Right. Strong respect for, for the All Blacks. And... Uh, well, the, the the last big game, I guess, between France and the All Blacks, which was hanging on a knife edge, was the 2011 World Cup, I think, was it? Or the 2015 World Cup, uh, where um, <laughs> the guy had to be brought in uh, from uh, fishing, from uh, what uh, catching, uh, I'm trying to think of the little fish that he was doing. He was fishing and they had to call him in due to injury uh, and he slotted the um, penalty goal which won the game. Oh, yeah. Sometimes uh, the French team can can be a challenge to the All Blacks, but mostly uh, they they smashed by the All Blacks. <laughs> wow! <laughs> but they still, we still have uh, lots of respect for the All Blacks. And now my 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 daughters they born in New Zealand, so yeah. we win either way. Anyway. Right? And yeah. it's just rugby after all. It's a game. Yeah. yeah well, one of one of the things about um, both uh, Sasha and Ivan is this distinction about peer support. And peer support uh, is practiced by people who have lived experience. This is the this is the really distinguishing feature of peer support. Is, am I right in saying that, Sasha? Yeah. So peer support kind of relies on us having our own lived experience, so that we can really kind of walk alongside other people who have experienced some form of distress in their life. It can be addictions. It can be mental health. We we kind of don't we kind of see them going hand in hand. Um, Having lived experience kind of brings us to the same level. You know, there's that level of mutual respect when working with somebody who's walked the same walk as you potentially. Um, It just, yeah, it feels more like support rather than somebody telling you what to do. Well, I I think it enhances your credibility as a worker in mental health that you've been there and done that. Um, Would you you agree with that? I think so. (laughs) Yeah, some uh, some peers, like I give you an example when we we uh, I've just started last year with uh, mine and buddy and with Sasha and um, other co-workers. But when we go in the ward in the psychiatric ward uh, to do groups, like uh, sometimes the peers they kind of connect with us and uh, mm. we kind of the, in the same on the same level. Because they they know that we've experienced the same things, so it makes a difference to them. And and possibly have had experience of being in a psychiatric hospital or a respite. I mean, I'm not uh, I'm not uh, assuming that with either of you. But um, one of the things that we we talked about before coming into the studio, particularly with Sasha, is that that, that she is a peer support worker with Fraser McDonald, and uh, you might like to tell us a bit about that, because that was the ward that I ended up in. It's uh, the ward that you go to if you're um, a senior citizen over <laughs> 65, uh, and uh, you have some little strategies uh, that uh, help to uh, recover people in that hospital so we through mind and body have started doing um peer support so it's um not specifically working in fraser mcdonald they're really welcoming to us and they let us go in so we take i take my little dog she's a shih tzu maltese cross we call her shadow or shit tease whichever you prefer um and we go in and we usually visit for about an hour every wednesday if we can 
um, often going for walks to the duck pond with people who are allowed some leave. It's a really good opportunity for people to just sit and be with an animal. I think the love you can get from an animal is just second to none. My dog has gotten me through some really tough times and I, I feel like it's a real privilege to be able to share that right. with the patients that are there. And then you understand uh, that your dog has helped you get through some tough times. And uh, so, you know, that surely makes influences your attitude towards bringing an animal into um, patients' lives. Completely. So at the moment we um, have three dogs that work with our support workers at Mind and Body and we're hoping to expand that at some stage. We work within the hospital or um, respite care. Um, but we also use them one-on-one in our peer support work, which is pretty special. So I've, I've had the privilege of being able to invite peers into meetings with me where they've gotten to bond and really create a lovely relationship with Shadow as well as myself. So that really helps with the rapport building yeah. process of being a support worker. Well, there's a lot of talk about the benefits of uh, pets in terms of recovery and mental in mental health and I think uh, there's been a lot of um, publicity coverage about uh, Vietnam veterans that want uh, support, financial support to, to have their own animals and uh, I think the American military has been very slow to recognise the benefits of pets uh, so, I've, so I've read but I think they're slowly coming round to realise that this is a, a, a wonderful way of um, these uh, uh, Vietnam vets getting over their post-traumatic stress disorder. Well, I think the, the key to having a pet is these little things that actually help us to stay well in our day-to-day lives is like going for a walk, getting outside and getting some fresh air. Well, I've been injured, like you said. Shadow didn't care that I couldn't walk very fast. She still wanted to go for her daily walk. Right. So it actually helped me to stay well during that period where I was a little bit could have been a little bit more susceptible to hitting the bucket again. Right. Yeah. Hitting the bucket being... Well, we've, we've had an interesting journey. We've gone through lots of different pathways to get to a stage of recovery. I tried lots of different things, dabbled in lots of different things. I like to say I've got different badges of diagnoses right. and I choose which one I want to wear every day and I put that one on and I'll be that one today and tomorrow might be something else. Is it... Is it um useful to, to put a label on uh, or put a diagnosis on you? Does that, does that help or hinder you? Well, for some people it is really useful. Um, for me, I, I don't see myself as that. I see myself as a whole person and that's a lot why I've really gotten into peer support is because we look at it as a person being a whole person rather than their diagnosis. Mm. Um, and so for some people, yeah, it's really important. For us and the way we work with people and the way I see myself, no... Yeah, well, it sounds as though you, you certainly um, place importance on your physical health as well as your mental health um, because walking, um, that's certainly something that I did out of Fraser McDonald's and I think I lost about five kilos uh, from may have been the food in the hospital. <laughs> it might have just been a lot of uh, working on the exercise and walking around uh, One Tree Hill. What, what's your attitude about exercise, Ivan? Well, personally, I think um, it's very important that um, I do a little bit of exercise every day, even though like some, some days I don't really feel like doing anything. But uh, I try to force myself to do a little bit. And uh, I like walking. Mm-hmm. Like my favorite place would be on uh, the top of Mount Eden. Right. Sorry, I don't remember the Maori name, but... Um, it's a, it's a I think it's a very spiritual place, yeah. and uh, I like I like being on my own, so not too too many people around. It's right. really, really pretty packed during the day, so I I like exercise. I do a little bit at the gym, and I think it's good for everyone, really. Yeah, well, you mentioned spirituality, and uh, I think that's a, a factor. Is that is that something that's important to you, Sasha? Um. So I grew up in a fairly religious family and so that's played a part in the way that I live my life now. I think I've taken a lot of the cultural things from that and used that more than a spirituality side of things. I think the family values that I was taught as a result of religion has really played a part in how I stay healthy and how I try to help other people. 
You're with Take It From Us on 104.6 Planet FM. Uh, today we are talking to uh, Ivan Kashishki and uh, Sasha Shear, who are peer support workers at Mind and Body Consultants. We've probably gone off our question line uh, very quickly, and I, I want to ask Sasha, why is that song your happy song? Um, I guess for me, one of the tools that I use is actually music. It's something that helps me when I'm not having such a great time. So I have different playlists with different songs for different motivational moods that I need to get myself into. And there's something about that song that just feels very inspiring. Mm. Um, Yeah. I mean, motivation when we're unwell is very hard to capture. And um, it's probably five or six weeks now since I was in hospital and I'm only just starting to to feel sufficiently motivated to get things done mm. you know I mean I did the basics like feeding myself and sleeping and going to work but um, I wasn't motivated to really clean the house or do the garden or I don't know, those little extra things and now I'm doing a few more things, you know, and getting out and doing more exercise and uh, taking a bike out and and that's, uh, I think, a reflection of motivation. Have you got any, either of you, any sort of strategies to enhance our motivation when we're feeling low? Well... When I'm feeling low, um, I, I still try to go for a walk because it kind of uh, refreshes my brain and, and starts working on the legs and the heart, so it's all good. Like Obviously, I don't really go when it's raining hard. I, right. I'd rather go to the, the gym for a little bit of exercise. Right. But music, uh, as Sasha said previously, actually... Uh, for me, it played a huge part in my life. Too. I'm right. go- going to see some gigs sometimes. Well, what um, Ivan hasn't revealed is he, he's a bit of a radio star himself. He's a technician here at Planet FM for the French uh, program. I think I'm correct in saying that. But you've also got a history of radio in France. Would you like to tell us a little bit about that? Well, yeah, in France, um, like in my time in the late 80s, uh, the military service was still compulsory, so um, you had no choice but to do it. And I couldn't really see myself um, learning how to use guns because it's not my really my philosophy. I don't, I'm, I've got no interest to uh, to uh, know how to use a gun myself. So I dra- I um, actually was a conscientious objector by refusing to do the um, military service, and I had to do, choose a non-profit. Association for two years um, instead of the service, and I worked in a Catholic radio station. And one of one of the program that I remember was really good was actually linking families uh, with people who were in prison. So um, we had their their kids actually passing them messages right. online and oh, on, on air on air. Yeah, so the 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 guys in prison. They're actually listening to the program, and they had a special message for them uh, by their families or friends. Or but the families actually came into the studio to talk to the uh, people in their their. G- generally, not. Uh, they were ringing us, right? And we put them on online. Oh, brilliant! With the phone, you know. Yeah. Oh, let's. Uh, we, we do try and encourage sometimes people calling us here in the studio, uh, but uh, not always with a great deal of success. Well, uh, let's get back to the agenda. Um, I mean, I think that uh, we have um, we've explained that peer support is all about um, workers that have experience of mental health. Um, so where does peer support really happen, uh, Sasha? Um, so peer support happens mostly out in the community. We are aiming to try and link people up into community resources. Essentially our job is to make ourselves redundant at some stage, which is somewhat weird. Yeah. Um, we do meet in lots of different places, so it's really led by the peer that we're working with. Sometimes that might be at their house, it could be at a cafe or a library. Some people we work at internet cafes with them. It's it's really up to them. 
And uh, one of the things I think peer support is about is trying to encourage the independence of the clients or peers that you're working with. Is that, am I correct in assuming that? Yeah. So we'll encourage um, our peers to actually meet us at places rather than ourselves transporting them there. So often it might be a case of we'll, we'll drive them to the cafe or they'll find their own way home um, or taking a bus with them so that they can get more confident in using public transport, which I don't know about you, I personally am not so fond of doing. Right. Yeah, well, I had to use public transport a little bit when I uh, was in hospital. I could get uh, right outside and get on the link bus, and uh, that's a brilliant service. I too. didn't have... Sorry, I... I- I was just going to say, I didn't have much option because I drove buses for about four years, but I had the best seat in the house. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I guess you're saying you're the best driver in Auckland. But well, bus I, driver. Well, I'll, let's just say I had no uh, incidents over the four years. So if you had a year without any problems, they gave you a safe driving certificate. And I'm thinking, please. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a little bit of insight into Declan that we didn't know about. As He's a former bus driver. Um, so uh, Ivan... Cultivating independence in this arena of peer support, is, is that how important is that? Yeah, I think um, we kind of encourage people to, um, to get their own autonomy, autonomy back, um, even though they've got an experience in, um, in mental health distress and try, try to, for some people, like they're very isolated and um, sometimes. You could be potentially the only one who, who, whom they see during the week, and try during to, the whole week. Yeah, for some for some cases, not uh, most probably, but uh, some cases, yes. So you know, isn't that one of the great things that you mentioned about walking? I mean, I felt uh, quite isolated staying in my own apartment, um, and. I go, I, I've been going out and joining one of the other patients, former patients from Fraser MacDonald, and we've been walking together around One Tree Hill. And it's opened my eyes to just what a beautiful, beautiful park One Tree Hill is and how lovely it is to be out there. And, and the comparison between walking in One Tree Hill and being in my apartment on my own is just chalk and cheese. And, you know, I think that's one of the things. It's sometimes very difficult to motivate ourselves. Uh, We probably think that we've got horns growing out of the top of our head and, you know, people are going to see that we're mentally deranged. But that's not the case. And getting out and walking on a beautiful day, uh, seeing other people, uh, I think it's a a tonic that is worth um, motivating ourselves to do. Definitely. And, and, you know, if you tie it into music a little bit, for me, that was something that helped me to get out and walk was just to take my headphones, listen to some music and get out there because it made me less concerned about the people who might be looking at me or watching me. All I was doing was going for a walk, thinking about the beautiful music that I was playing through my headphones and I had a great time doing it until I was confident enough to go out and actually go up to somebody and be like, hey, how are you doing? Oh, this is my dog. You've got a cute dog. Right. You have a conversation. You're with Take It From Us on 104.6 Planet FM. Um, I guess the one thing that I would say is completely different to a lot of other establishments is that everybody who works there has lived experience. So we're talking about our admin team, whoever answers the phones. We've all at some stage in our lives experienced mental distress. And I think that's something that allows all of us to actually really be able to communicate, support each other and understand each other, which allows us to go out and do a really amazing job out in the field. 